everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Caitlin and on this channel I upload all sorts of content relating to true crime education and psychology related topics I do also have a second channel where I upload beauty fashion and lifestyle videos if you want to check that out that'll be on the screen as well as my Instagram and my TikTok where I'm literally constantly updating so if you want to see more regular content from me then check out all of those today I'm back with a relatively short case um, it's unsolved and it is completely baffling to me this is one that I've seen discussed so many times on different forums online just because it's so it's so baffling and what's so crazy about this case is that it remains unsolved to this day despite the fact the entire ordeal so the murder and the perpetrator were caught on camera so today we're going to be discussing the case of Leah Rowland's death and if you want to know more about the details of the case then keep on watching but before we get started I'm just going to zoom through a usual disclaimer that I like to include at the start of all my videos just letting you guys know that I'm not claiming to be an expert in this case or any of the other cases that I cover over on my channel I'm simply relaying information I'm able to find myself through research of sources on the internet and because only certain sources are accessible to me it means I may get things wrong leave things out or mispronounce things I apologize if I do any of those things I'm not trying to cause anyone any harm or an injustice I'm simply working with the information I have available to me and with all that being said we should just go ahead and get started discussing the case of Leah Rowlands Leah Rowlands case begins on March the 10th in 1997 in Nebraska 41 year old Leah Rowland was working a morning shift at the Amoco petrol station located on Highway 80 in a place called Kozad. Previous day, Leah had had a conversation with her manager that had ended particularly well for her as she'd actually received a promotion to manager. And on the morning of March the 10th, she'd been in the store for a few hours when at around 10.30 a.m. a young man had walked into the store. It was determined that he had driven up to the quiet petrol station in a red Pontiac Grand Am. The video footage collected of the car at the petrol station had showed that it had no front license plate and it was particularly difficult to read the rear plate so investigators later had difficulty in locating an owner of this car because it was so hard to read. She'd noticed quickly that this man as he'd entered the store was barefoot and as she watched him she noticed that he had walked over to the shelves that were filled with different drinks he proceeded to open one and take a sip from the can. Authorities working on the case later noted that he appeared very confident and brazen like he knew exactly what he was doing and that he was going to get away with it and as a man took a sip from the drink he looked up and stared directly into the security camera inside the store. He then turns to see a mother and daughter who were also shopping in the store and appeared to wait for them to leave before then walking over to the counter where Leah was standing. Once at the counter the pair had spoken for a short while before it's known that Leah reaches into a drawer and pulls out all of the money that she had stored behind the counter. She hands the man the money and then proceeds to lay on the floor behind the counter. Despite her seemingly cooperating with this unknown man he then continues continues to pull out a 9mm semi-automatic pistol and he shoots her three times. It was later determined that she had suffered two bullet wounds in the arm and one in the skull. The man then leaves the store with no one else being to witness for the crime, carrying with him the drink that he'd picked up, a pack of cigarettes, a lighter, $150 in cash and a car filled with petrol. And what is so haunting about this particular crime is that the murder remains unsolved to this day and yet we know all of these facts about what happened during the incident because of the fact it was all taped on camera. The security camera had picked up the entire ordeal and prior to shooting Leah the perpetrator like I said looked directly up into the camera while inside the shop meaning that there is a clear footage of the attacker's face and yet we still have no identity. It's a case that is still widely discussed to this day I think it just seems so concerning that someone could carry out such a cold-blooded attack in broad daylight whilst being clearly seen on camera and still somehow get away with it. It does still make me wonder whether this is something that could actually happen today or whether because of our technological advancements something would occur in the investigation a lot quicker or was it just an unlikely occurrence that the perpetrator has no one that could identify him. The FBI were called in to aid the investigation into this murder and the investigation seemed to pretty much leave all the authorities lost and in a lot of sources I read the FBI profilers stated that they believed the perpetrator had likely carried out an attack prior to this incident and it likely wouldn't be his last. According to a few of the news reports I read, Leah's brother had publicly shared his opinion on who he thought was to blame for Leah's murder and that he thought Leah's ex-husband was behind it. He'd given an interview where he stated that the couple used to own a restaurant together and that he believed him to be a rather dishonest person. According to him there was a number of strange details about the murder in particular the way the attacker had been dressed. A form of dress that was noted as being entirely inappropriate for Nebraska at that time of the year and his theory mostly builds on this that he believed his sister's ex-husband had paid for the attacker to 
travel from elsewhere to kill Leah in exchange for money. During the investigation, authorities had also discovered a letter that Leah herself had written less than a year prior to her death addressed to her sons. The letter was 16 pages long and she had gone into detail about why she'd left her husband and the extent to which he had abused her during their relationship, how unhappy she was, and this did then start to raise more questions regarding his potential involvement in her death. And Roy Rowland, who was Leah's brother, had offered a $5,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest, and to my knowledge, this case is still being investigated despite authorities having no indication of who the attacker was and whether robbery was the sole motive behind the attack. In terms of theories, the simplest of theories was that Leah Rowland's murder was the result of a random robbery and shooting, and that the attacker had no personal connection to her or anyone in her life. And it may have just been a random attack carried out by someone traveling through the area, hence the way he was dressed and how no one could identify him. There had been a number of similar attacks carried out in other petrol stations in various areas that were investigated as potentially being linked with Leah's murder, but they've all just appeared too difficult to conclusively link. As I said, another theory had been the idea that the attacker had been hired by Leah's ex-husband, potentially in relation to their marriage ending particularly badly. The location of where the couple had once owned a restaurant together had raised a few eyebrows in relation to this theory, as some people have suggested that the attacker may have been from the area where they once owned this restaurant, as it would provide an explanation as to why he was wearing the clothes he was, since he was dressed seemingly more appropriately for a hotter climate than Nebraska. Leah's ex-husband died in 2015, and despite this theory being thrown about, he was never officially listed as a suspect by the police due to the lack of conclusive evidence suggesting he was so. All details in this case remain on file as it is listed as an open cold case and more than two decades later it remains unsolved. And that is the end of this case today. So let me know your thoughts below. Like I said, there's a few theories that have been thrown about but let me know if you have your own. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.